Welcome to this introduction and training video into Martin Companion Software 1.6. I'm Wouter Verlinden, one of the product managers here at Martin. So, what does Martin Companion offer you? First and foremost, Martin Companion allows you to update firmware into any Martin product, new or old. Secondly, Martin Companion also uses RDM to configure and patch fixtures without having to physically access them via the display. Multiple settings can also be updated in bulk using the settings template mechanism. And new in version 1.6 is the ability to do standalone programming of certain Martin fixtures, allowing them to run fully standalone once programmed using Martin Companion. Let's look at the first function, updating firmware on any Martin product. The first thing to note is that Martin Companion automatically downloads all the firmware for all the Martin fixtures from the Martin Companion cloud. So no need to manually download any firmware files from our website. You can browse through the different product families or use the search function to find the product you're working on. Fixture firmware can be updated in three ways. First one via a Martin Companion cable over a DMX line to the fixtures. Secondly, via a USB stick that you prepare with Martin Companion and then plug into the fixtures. And thirdly, via a Martin P3 system controller for which you can download the software of the fixtures via Martin Companion and then apply it to the fixtures via the P3 system controller. So let's have a look at uploading fixture firmware via Martin Companion. In the firmware screen of Martin Companion, you will find the list of all Martin product families and all products within each family. As mentioned before, the firmware is automatically downloaded from the Martin Companion cloud. And in the about screen, you can see when you synchronized for the last time with the Martin Companion Cloud. Always check this before starting. Back to the firmware screen. You can, of course, manually scroll through the different product families and through the different products that Martin has. And also consult the different firmware versions that we have for each product, including the release notes at the bottom of the screen. But we also have a search function allowing you to just search for a product. In this case, I'm looking for XIP, which brings me the Mac R XIP, for which there's currently only one firmware available, version 1.0.0, with the release notes at the bottom of the screen. There's three methods uh, to download the software. The first one is updating firmware via a Martin Companion cable, so over the mix line. Second one via USB stick. And the third one via a P3 system controller. Let's look at each of these three more closely. Before you update firmware via the MX cable, you first need to check that your Martin companion cable is well connected. This you can check in the top right corner. The light needs to be green. Then you make sure your DMX cables are connected to your fixtures and make sure your fixtures have finished resetting. Then you press OK and Martin Companion will start to find the fixtures and confirm if they require a firmware update. You would then just click OK to get started, which we're not going to do in this training because that would take some time. The second method is downloading the firmware on a USB stick, which you can then plug into the fixture. Note that this function is only available for products with USB port. So you just click the button and then select your USB stick where you want the firmware to be placed and Martin Companion will automatically download the firmware to the stick. As you can see here, the, the bank file in this case has now been placed on the stick, so I can now put that USB stick into the fixture to perform a firmware upgrade locally. Let's look at the third method, that's updating firmware via a Martin P3 system controller. Also here, Martin Companion will suggest to download a firmware file suitable for use with the P3 system controller. Once again, you select the folder where you want the file to be placed. 
Marty Companion downloads the needed files and places them in that location. You will see a folder is created with in this case the P3 firmware file which you can then import into a Martin P3 system controller to update firmware via the P3 system controller. So these are the three ways to update firmware into a Martin fixture using Martin Companion. Another useful resource for finding the overview of which firmwares are available is on our Martin website. When you click on support and firmware, you will find the page which for each product listed what the latest firmware version is and if that firmware can be updated via the MX using a Martin companion cable, via USB or via the Martin P3 system controller. This page provides a clear overview for all Martin products. Offline mode allows computers that are not connected to the internet to still get all the firmware files via USB stick. So as we've learned, Martin Companion automatically downloads all firmware from the Martin Companion cloud. And on a computer that is connected to the internet, you can now place the entire contents of the cloud on a USB stick via the export function, and then bring that USB stick to a computer that is not connected to the internet. And using that USB stick, update the Martin Companion firmware packages locally without any connection to the internet. Let's look at a quick demo of this. So here I'm on a computer that is connected to the internet. As you can see, all the firmware packages are there. As I scroll through the different products, all the packages can be seen. Now I go to the cloud page and I see, yes, my cloud was synchronized very recently, but I can now export the contents of the cloud onto a single file. So I'll place the file there. I call it cloud export. And now Martin Companion will download the entire contents of the Companion Cloud and put them all on that USB stick. This takes a while, of course, because it's a quite big package. Now I'm on a computer that is not connected to the internet, so you will see no firmwares are showing up because it's not connected to the internet. And in the cloud sync, you will see it has not synchronized. It just stays to the date it was installed. And also when I try to force it, it fails to connect to the server. This connect computer is not connected to the internet. So I need to use the import function to manually import the files from my USB stick. So on my computer, I find the firmware files. You see it's a quite big image at 300 megabytes. And I start importing the firmware files into Martin Companion. Once again, this takes a while. It's quite a few files that need to be imported. Once the import is complete, you will see that the cloud sync date updates to the date that you imported the firmware from the USB stick. Now going to the firmware page, you see that Marty Companion has all the firmware now and that small icon indicates that they've been imported via a USB stick. Let's look at a second function of Martin Companion, the ability to configure and patch fixtures via RDM. Martin Companion, when connected to fixtures via a Martin Companion cable and DMX cables, will automatically discover all the fixtures on the line. You'll get an easy spreadsheet style uh, overview of all fixtures and their parameters. It's worth noting that Martin deals with both standard RDM parameters such as address, the mix mode, lamp hours, device hours, but Martin Companion also includes a lot of custom Martin specific RDM parameters such as fan modes, dimmer curves, color and calibration modes, and all of these can be configured using Martin Companion without having to walk up to a fixture. Also nice to know is that Martin Companion can update settings in multiple fixtures at the same time. So if you want to switch the mix mode or fan mode on multiple fixtures at the same time, you do not need to do this one by one.
Let's have a look at some examples of how this RDM view can be used. The RDM view can be found on the left hand side. And once you click that window, Martin Companion will start to discover fixtures on the DMX line to which it is connected once again via the Martin Companion cable. In this case, we have a DMX PowerPort 375 connected with seven video Scaptron fixtures. Martin Com will, Companion will discover them one by one and they will show up in the spreadsheet. The first handy function is the identify function. With that enabled, any product you click or multiple products you click will highlight in the real world so you can easily see which fixture you're working on. Let's first get the DMX modes correct. Let's put them all in basic mode. So you select multiple and then Martin Companion starts updating them one by one. Now we're going to address them. Here, the identify function is really useful because any fixture you select, and this can also be done with the arrow keys, will highlight as it is selected. So you easily see which fixture is which one in the line. So now I've selected the second fixture that needs to be set to address 11. So I just type enter and 11 and the address gets written. And I use my keys to get to the next fixture, which needs to be 21, next fixture 31. So with the arrow keys, you just navigate through the fixtures look at which fixture is which and type in the address right away uh, where looking at the last use column is also very useful because then you can see what the last use DMX address of the previous fixture is. So you don't need to calculate the offset yourself. Martin Companion gives you a little hand there. You can also sort fixtures in Martin Companion on any column just by clicking the title of the column so you can just sort by address, sort by product model or whatever you like. Still with highlight enabled, I can now step through the fixtures to verify that my addressing was done correctly and I didn't mess up anything. All good. So this job is now done. All fixtures were set to the right DMX mode and were set to the correct start address. Let's look at the second example. In this case, we've connected four Mac Encore Performance cold fixtures. Once again, they're automatically discovered by Marty Companion. You, of course, can see uh, the DMX mode, the start address. A nice thing to do is the clicking the I button here, which gives you the listing of the DMX channels of the selected DMX mode. You also have access to more advanced parameters, so as the dimmer curve or video tracking. And in this case, I want to get them all to the same dimmer curve. So I click the first one, shift, click the last one, and then I can set them all to the same dimmer curves. In this case, square law. Moving on to the next page where we have the control parameters. Here you find parameters such as pan tilt speed, effect speed, fan mode, but also more advanced parameters such as focus tracking. Let's get the effect speed on these fixtures aligned. So once again, select them all and select the effect speed I want. Selecting multiple fixtures can be done with a uh, normal click the first one, shift click the last one, or using control to select multiples. In the display uh, page, I get all the settings for the display. So if a display will automatically turn off, the display rotation, the display intensity can all be changed here. So you can, for example, set all your display, displays to stay on and not uh, go off automatically after a few minutes. The next page is power. Here you find settings such as uh, the reset of a function or you can enable fixtures to be reset by the MX. Outdoor are parameters for uh, fixtures that are used outdoor. And pan tilt limits are very useful for moving heads where you can remotely set pan and tilt limits on any fixture that supports it. Of course, you can reset it as well here. The details page gives some more uh, detailed information on the product, such as serial number, RDM UID, the software version, and more. The last page is the service page. In here you find the sensors. So this is very useful for debugging fixture. By clicking sensors, you get an overview of all the sensors in the fixture and you can see if anything is going wrong with that fixture. So a lot of information there to be found. 
but you also have buttons to set a fixture to factory default so when you click it it will set the fixture to factory defaults and when it has completed that procedure the button will go gray again so right now he's still setting it all to defaults and he's now done self-test uh, allows you to do a quick self-test of the fixture so once it's green the fixture is doing a self-test sequence on its own and you can of course stop that as well Let's now look at the third function of Marty Companion, the bulk update of fixture configuration via settings templates. So what are settings templates? Any combination of RDM parameters can be stored in a settings template. So anything you saw on the previous uh, screen in the RDM can be combined and stored in a template. And then you can apply a settings template to multiple fixtures of course of the same type in a single operation and it's also possible to share settings templates between users as you will see in the example so there are some use cases of this a first one would be to prepare your fixtures in the warehouse before sending them out so instead of going through each fixture one by one and getting all the settings correct you just connect them with a dmx cable push the settings template and martin company will set all the fixtures to the same settings as you like them it can also be used to quickly apply pan tilt limits to an entire line of fixtures at once instead of doing it fixture per fixture. Or you can reconfigure an entire rig in a matter of seconds, changing the mix mode, changing uh, dimmer curves, changing fan modes. You can do all of that uh, just by applying a settings template without going around and doing it one by one. So let's look at some examples in a demo. So you go to the settings template. And here you see that Marty Companion has discovered four Mac Encore Performance Cold fixtures. And when you create, click Create, you can create a template. Let's create a theater template for my Mac Encore Performance fixtures. So in my theater template, I might want uh, the dimmer curves to be set to square law, tongue stimulation to be set to on, pen tilt spin to be set to smooth, effect speed uh, smooth as well. Anything you click and select will be stored in the template and then apply it uh, when you apply the template. Anything you don't click will be ignored later on. So I've now created a template and I can now apply this theater template. Once I push apply, he will push all those settings to all the fixtures on the line. Let's check if it worked. Let's go to the RDM view and check if all those settings were applied. So I can see all the dimmer curves were set to square law. Sometimes it takes a few seconds to get applied. Be aware of that. You will see that tungsten emulation was set to on on all the fixtures. You see pan and tilt speed and effect speed were all set to smooth. And the fan mode was set to constant ultra low. And the display, uh, yeah, it was set to auto off. So anything you put in the template, once you apply the template, will be pushed to the fixtures. Let's now create a touring template for those same fixtures. You might want a different dimming curve. You might want tungsten emulation off. You might want video tracking on. Uh, as said before, any setting you like can be stored in a template and only the ones that you enable with the checkbox in front will be part of the template. Any setting not checked will not be changed when you apply a template. Very important to notice, only the ones you check will be in the template. And now if I click apply, I will now see the touring template as well, so I could apply it as well. You can also import and export these templates. So when you click import export, you'll see all the templates stored on your computer. And then you se can select one or multiples, click export, and then you can save it anywhere you want. And then you can give it to a colleague who might want to apply the same settings to other fixtures. You can also import a template. In this case, I received a template with um, a pre uh pen tilt limits. So I import it, it gets added to my list. And if I now go to my edit, I can now also edit the template. So the pre trust is there. And I can see that this template consists indeed of some pan tilt limits, uh, which I can then of course now also uh, apply to fixtures as well. So as you can see, the settings templates are a very powerful tool to quickly get settings on fixtures aligned. Let's now look at standalone programming of Martin fixtures using Martin Companion. Some Martin fixtures allow standalone programming. 
Standalone shows in such fixtures can contain shows of up to 20 scenes with individual hold time and fade time for each scene. The scenes are stored inside each fixture individually, so not all scene fixtures have, need to have the same look. And once they're stored inside the fixture, Martin can be disconnected and the fixtures will run on their own. A synchronization mechanism makes sure that all fixtures run fully in sync, so they go to the same queue at the same time. Of course, for that, the fixtures need to be daisy chained with a daisy dynamics cable, but not connected to any controller. The Martin Exterior Linear Pro is the first product family uh, to support this, but more Martin products will follow later. Let's have a quick look at this in a short demo. So the standalone functionality can be found on the left. And first you need to discover all the fixtures on the line using the Martin companion cable. So I have here uh, one exterior linear pro quad and two exterior linear pro CTC fixtures. Of course, I can see which one is which by using the identify function. So any fixture will hi highlight itself. And of course, I can also change the DMX mode. So the DMX mode determines how many channels of control I will have when creating the standalone show. So I'll put this one in uh, four segments and then I select the fixtures I want to use. So not all fixtures need to be part of it, but I've in this case selected them all. And then I can do create show or edit existing show. When you edit an existing show, it will read back a show from the fixtures, allowing you to change it. But here we go to create a new one. So you first select the fixture which you want to control. So in this case, the quad product, and I start programming scene number one. So for scene number one, I want uh, segment one to be red, segment two to be uh, green, and then segment three to be red, and segment four to be green again. So using the sliders and by looking at the fixtures, obviously you create a first look. Now I select the other fixtures, in this case, the CTC fixtures. I select both of them because I want them to behave the same in scene number one. And I'll put the dimmer open and I change the color temperature. Martin Companion will actually show the real world value. So in this case, 2700 Kelvin. So it's not limited to only just seeing the raw DMX values. Now I can add a scene. So scene two is now being added. And I change the color temperature in scene number two to a 4000 Kelvin white. So that's scene number two. Now going to the quad fixture again. Also in scene number two, there I change uh, segment one to blue. And segment two goes to red. So just creating a different pattern here in my second scene. So blue for segment three and red for segment four. So that's the look in segment in uh, in scene two. So I've, I can always toggle between scenes using the previous and next scene buttons. And I'm going to go ahead and add a third scene to this show. In this third scene, I might want uh, segment four to be magenta and segment three to be Oh, no, it's not magenta. It's yellow and green. So once again, same for segment one and two, I go for yellow and green. And now I also create a third scene for the CTC fixtures. Once again, I can select multiple fixtures if I want them to have the same look within a certain scene. So for that third scene, I want the CTC fixtures to be a nice cold white at 6,500 Kelvin. Once again, I can toggle through the various scenes by using the next and previous scene buttons to see how each fixture uh, is looking in each scene. And of course, the real fixtures connected follow those patterns as well. So you can on the real fixtures see how they will look in the various scenes. Once I'm happy with the scenes, I go to scene timing. There I'm able to set a duration and a fade time for each of the scenes. So I first set them all to 10 seconds. Uh, then on the fade time, I set them all to three seconds. Ah, well, for scene two, I want to have a slightly shorter fade time. So you can just fine tune the settings as you go. When you press the play button, the fixtures will do a preview of the standalone show. The pre so the show is not yet in the fixtures, but you can already on the fixtures see how it's going to look. 
so you can preview how it's gonna look and then on the fly change your duration and your fade time so in this case i want to tweak the fade time on scene one a little bit so as you run through the preview here you can fine tune the fade and duration times till you're completely happy then you press stop and then you press run at which time the entire show will be uploaded to the fixtures and then if i click start standalone show and disconnect the martin companion cable from the fixtures the fixtures will start running their show so now i can uh, completely walk away it will completely autonomously run the show on all these fixtures so that was a quick look at that function thank you for watching this introduction and training video we hope you enjoy using martin companion version 1.6